So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and it is a 10.30, and we are live with our next installment of Little Shop of Physics Live, and this is the music show, and I want to thank folks who are joining us, and particularly thank those of you who are joining us as part of a class. We're really, really excited to be able to partner with classrooms, and we'll have more opportunities for you folks to get involved. So if your classroom wants to do something and be featured on the show, we can make that happen, and definitely get in touch with us, and we would be happy to make that go. But first, we have a whole bunch of people who are working today. I'm just going to introduce people as they come on, and then we're going to do some demonstrations. Our topic today is music, and we're going to start just a little music theory. What do you need to be able to make music? And I'm going to go over here to Casey, who is at the other end of the table. And Casey, it looks like you've got a guitar right there. Yes, You're I You're going to play us a little something? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> a little rough, it's a little it's early. Right. It's all right. It's, er it's early in the morning, but this is this is good. Casey is rocking out over there. Awesome. Yep. Just okay. strumming. Just strumming. Just strumming. <laughs> and then Casey, I'm I'm watching what you're doing with this. And to make music, which is what you're doing, we have to have three things. First off, you have to make a vibration. And how are you? What, what is vibrating on your guitar? The strings. So if you pluck a string, the string is the thing that's vibrating. How do you make it vibrate? By plucking it right here. Plucking the string makes it vibrate. Next thing, you have to have, that when the strings vibrate, that's cool, but sound is a wave in air. So we have to take that sound and make it get into the air. And what part of the guitar does that? The body right here. The body of the guitar. That's where the sound comes from? Mm-hmm. Can you prove that? Let's see. I have this music box here. Um, and if you just play the music box, can you hear it? It's real, real quiet, but if you put it on this, on the body of the guitar. Wow. Oh, I see. So the little tines on the music box are vibrating, and that makes the body of the guitar vibrate. And since it's so big, it can push around a lot more air. And if you tap it, you make noise too, right? Yes. Oh, awesome. Let's hear that music box one more time. Okay. So the music box, the little tines are vibrating, and the tines vibrate the body of the guitar, and the body of the guitar pushes air, and so we make a wave in air, which we can hear. Here comes the sun. We hope so. It's a little cloudy, but <laughs> it might be sunny later. And then the other thing we have to do is you have to change the pitch. Yes. So if you have the different widths of the strings. Oh, so you got chubby strings, you got skinny strings. Yes. And you can also change the length. And why does changing the length of the string change the pitch that you get? So basically the waves are just bouncing up and down in these strings. Oh, so like the wave bounces from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. And when you change the length of it by pushing down at the different places, um, it shortens that length. Oh, so it doesn't have to go as far, so it just does it more quickly, is what you're saying? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> and so we can change the pitch. So you have a means of making a vibration. You have a means of coupling that vibration to the air, and you have a way of changing the pitch. You got everything you need to make music. Yes, sir. Awesome. Now, the fact that the body makes the sound, um, if you keep the body from vibrating, you can stop it from making sound. And we have a stunt guitar that we filled up with sand that we're going to show you and if you take it and don't do this to a violin but if you take it and you fill it up with sand it's going to affect the way the sound goes so with the guitar with the violin that way the sand is all down below you can hear it and then when we stand it up yeah now the sand is against the top we're not able to we're not able to hear it because that sand is just damping the vibration and are we playing hot cross buns in this video? We are playing hot cross buns <laughs> in this video. And I think a lot of the people there have probably had recorder lessons where they play hot cross buns. We're going to have a lot of hot cross buns today. That is one thing we can say for sure. There's a 100% chance of hot cross buns. <laughs> Speaking of which, Casey's got another <laughs> musical instrument over there. Casey, take it away. What do you got? I've got some glasses here um, filled with different amounts of water. And when you put in different amounts of water, does that, that changes the pitch? It does. Oh, and before we start, <laughs> I'm going to ask people a question. I'm going to ask people a question. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. If, we, if you put your finger and run it around the rim of a glass, you can make it vibrate and you can get a pitch out of it. 
And Casey, could you just demonstrate with one of the glasses? So you're making it vibrate, and the vibration is pushing the air on, and we can hear it. Here's my question. If I add water, how is that going to change the pitch? Will that make the pitch higher or lower if you add water to it? So folks are chiming in. Whew, and I'm seeing about an even split between higher and lower. And a couple of people are saying that it's not going to change. There's always a couple of people who are opposed to change in any audience. Pretty much everybody in my department is in that <laughs> audience. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, basically a 50-50 split between higher and lower. I think the only way we can settle this question is to actually try it out. And Casey, you've got a glass that you can add water to, right? I do. Let's do that one first. All right, so we're moving the glasses to the side. And here is a glass, and you're going to play it? Yes. All right, let me get it wet. Hold on. Okay. Oh, that is definitely getting lower <laughs> as you go. So adding water makes the pitch get lower. And I think you just have to have the water is vibrating. You just have to push more water around a little bit more mass. It's just going to happen more slowly. So you got three glasses. Which one's going to be the high pitch? Which one's going to be the low pitch? A little bit of water, high pitch, and a lot of water, low pitch. And let's hear a rendition of... I think hot cross buns. Should we do this? Oh, yes. I think so. All, All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we need to for that oh. hot cross buns on the singing glasses. That was awesome. But we're going to do some other things. Over here, Brenna has got three pop bottles. You can play music on pop bottles, too? You certainly can. So there are some people that play the jug, and it's basically <laughs> this same phenomenon that Casey was showing us. We're going to vibrate air and water. So if I pour some water in this bottle, and then I play a sound off of it, I get a certain noise. Oh, and should we ask people what will happen if you add more water? I think so. All right. So Brenda's going to go ahead and play that note again. Just go ahead and play it. Hold on. And if Brenna adds water, will that make the pitch higher or lower? I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna... Man, we got a 50-50 split going on again. And as always, the people who are opposed to any change. Come on, guys. <laughs> change, change is okay. Embrace it, children. You're the future. Alrighty. Are they are they done voting? It's Brian? a fifty fifty split and everybody's done. Alrighty. So I filled this bottle up with some more water. Ooh. Makes the pitch a lot higher. higher. So of course. Of course. I must play hot <laughs> across. I don't think that was, I don't think that was obvious, Ben. And why does How it make it higher? Because in the bottle, what's vibrating? Well, the air is vibrating. It's ah, kind of, and so I have less air to yep. vibrate. Yep, so it makes the pitch. Higher. Makes the pitch. I love it. I love it. And you got three bottles with different levels, two Fantas and a Coke. I do. Well, I didn't have enough Fanta bottles or Coke bottles, so here it's we go. A, it's okay. It's okay. We can, <laughs> we can accept this. Let's hear Hot Cross Buns Alrighty. on the bottles. That is delightful. Thank you, Brenna. And this is something people could try, couldn't it? They could. All you need is a bottle or a jug. You just so. need a bottle or a jug and a bunch of water, and you can tune it to different pitches and play hot cross buns on the bottle. But wait, wait, suppose you're not, you know, like blowing on the bottle can be a little bit challenging. If you want to use a glass container to make music, there's another way. And we're over here to this end of the table, now I'm joined by Maud. Oh, yeah. Maud is back, and Maud has got three containers with different amounts of water in it. And Mon, how are you going to play those? I, I just got a little pencil here, and I'm just going to tap the uh, the rims. Oh, okay. Now, them. before you t go too far, let's ask people <laughs> to vote. If you put more water in the jar, 
Will that make the pitch higher or will that make the pitch lower? I'm going to go ahead and launch the pole again, adding water. Does it go higher? Does it go lower? Ooh, in this case, we've got a clear favorite. We've got a clear favorite. Oh, there's lower is out in front. Are there still mm. people resisting change? There's still, there's 12% of the people <laughs> are resisting change. Oh. <laughs> Live your lives as so, your people. So besides the naysayers who say nothing is going to change ever, the, there's about there's a clear plurality for the people who say the pitch will be lower. Mod, take a single bottle there and let's add water to it and see what happens. All right, so I've got this empty one right here. So I'm just going to try it about there. How about if you tap it on the side? Oh, Go ahead and pour the water out and let's try it again and let's tap it on the side. And this is a tip for folks who are doing this. I would tap those bottles on the side. Okay, so let's try it. Oh, there we go. And keep adding water. Oh, that's going lower. That is going lower. That's going lower. And I would tap it above the level where the water is. Mm. So I think what's happened is the water is basically keeping the glass from vibrating. And so I think, or actually it, the water is having to vibrate with it. And so more mass vibrating is going to go more slowly. It's a lot like the glasses that Casey did. Perfect. And we got three glasses with three different amounts of water. I think I know what's coming next. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I could still surprise you, Brian. Should have named this show 101 Plays, Ways to Play Hot, hot cross, cross Buns. buns. Oh, yeah. And just excellent, excellent, excellent. And I'll say, let's try it on the sides on the just side, to see yeah. if we have a, a different pitch. To tap it on the sides. Oh, that was delightful. <laughs> Hot cross buns on the little filled glasses. And folks can try that. And if you add water, more stuff has to vibrate. More stuff has to vibrate. It's going to vibrate more slowly. Now, the next type of musical instrument we're going to work with is we have these metal pipes here. Okay, and it turns out this is just a piece of electrical conduit. So we got a whole bunch of electrical conduit at the hardware store and we cut it to certain lengths. And if you hold a pipe right here and where you hold it is really important. It's going to vibrate in a very particular way. If I hit it in the center, the center goes down and the ends go up. So the pipe vibrates like this and it's got a certain frequency that it likes to vibrate at. And if I have a long pipe, it'll vibrate at a low frequency. If I have a short pipe, it'll vibrate at a high frequency. Mine's kind of in the middle. Looks like Maude's got the one that's the shortest. I do. And Brenna's got the one that's the longest. We've got three notes. We have a high note. We have a note in the middle. I wonder what we song we're going to play. What's that? I wonder what song we're going to play. I wonder. Any, <laughs> any guesses? Go ahead and put it in the chat. What song do you think we should play? Let's see what folks are saying. Do we have any requests? Heavy metal. Stairway to heaven. Oh, <laughs> no. someone has said hot cross buns. Yes, well. I think we can do that. And someone says no, and I say yes. <laughs> Always say, the answer to hot cross buns is yes. That is the answer. Okay, Maude, take it away. <laughs> that was delightful. That was delightful. Beautiful. <laughs> oh dear. I think we should make a band. Uh, I think we, we already did make a band. band. We have the, it's, we're the, I think we're the hot cross bunnies. I think that's this is, this is what we can be. Hot cross crew. Hot cross crew. <laughs> we are already a band. Now the next thing which we're going to make music with is we have some pipes here. And I want you to think back to what Casey talked about. When Casey made music on the guitar, it was going, she plucked the string and the wave went from one end to the other and it bounces back and forth. When I have a tube, the same thing happens. So if I take a tube and it's got open ends, air, sound waves bounce up and back and forth, up and down the tube. And if I change the length of the tube, I change the distance that the sound has to travel and so I can change the pitch. So this one, if I make it longer, the pitch Ooh. is going to get lower. Same thing here. And we've got three tubes of three different lengths. 
And the way we have to make these play is by making some sort of vibration. Maude, show us how we play these things. How do you play one of these little pipes? <laughs> Hold on. That was an awesome song to be able to play <laughs> on that individual pipe. That was delightful. All right, so you these are called palm pipes, so you just basically hit it on your palm. All right, and you've got a short pipe, and I've got a medium length one. Brenna's got a long one. I think I think we should play some music. I think we should. A song with three notes, I think. A song with three yeah, notes. Any, a good one. Any requests? Someone says hot cross buns, please. Woo! Absolutely. We can do this. Okay, Maude, take it away. That's delightful. But Beautiful. what would happen if we made the pipes even bigger? Because we've got some giant pipes that we can play. Oh, yeah. We've got some giant ones. And I want to ask folks, go ahead and type in the chat. If we have really, really big pipes, what is that going to do to the pitch? Oh, somebody says lower. Somebody says super low. I think I think we have to try this out. I and think see. we do. And we're going to play these. We have our little slipper things here, which we can hit because our hands are not quite big enough to make it go. And make sure you hang on to the slipper, Brian. That's right. <laughs> I did have an accident earlier. Okay, Maude, take it away. All right, Beautiful. and another rendition of Hot Cross Buns on the Giant Pipes. But we can play other things on the Giant Pipes, and you can also make them go. You like, can actually, I, I took a balloon and I cut a balloon off, and it makes kind of a little <laughs> raspberry sound. You can play music with that. And we have a little video to show how this works. This was one of the funnest things I've done this week. And Brian, what did you name this particular instrument? Um, um, I think we can call this the raspberry organ. Oh, I think come for, on. For, for, for <laughs> <here>. <laughs> and there we go. Box minuet in G on the giant pipes. Playing it with the raspberry. I just want a 10 hour long video of this. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was awesome. And now Brenna and I have a co cooperative musical instrument. We have to be socially distanced, and so we have an instrument that we can play together at a great distance. Whoa! <laughs> Thank you for capturing that. And we've got a long, long pipe, and we can change the length. And if we take the length and make it longer, I think that's going to change the pitch. And I think we should play a little song on this. I think we should. Are you ready? This is my mallet and flying. I think that's a, I think I can keep going. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> a little quieter after I lost the end of the mallet, but I think I think that's okay. We will we will keep on going. One last instrument, which we're going to show you, and this is basically a reed musical instrument that Maud made for us. Maud, show us what you got. I have what at first. This is a, we're going to call this a harmonica. It doesn't look like one, I know. But I have cut a little hole in the side of it there, if you can see. Yeah. I've cut a little hole in the side of it at an angle, and I've pushed it in a tiny, tiny bit. And the top is open, and I took off the tab. And when I blow into it, it should make a sound kind of like a harmonica. But fair warning, this stuff is a little fiddly. <laughs> There it is. I'm hearing it. Pop can harmonica. It's a one tone yeah. harmonica. Yeah. If they have a different thing. read. And if my read is not planned so well, if I push it in a little bit, that usually helps. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Mine just sounds sad, but you know, I, at least it works. <laughs> we want to say thank you to Maude Hooray for the pop can harmonica. And Maude is going to leave us, and we're going to be joined by Nina. And then we're going to do, we have a, one last thing of, we're going to do. We're going to bring in some technology. And I'm going to start by doing this demonstration. This is some fun stuff you can try. And how this works is something we'll talk about later when we do a little bit more with invisible forces. This is a guitar pickup. And inside a guitar pickup, there's a magnet, and it gives it the ability to be able to measure things which are metal that vibrate. So I have a music box, and if I play my music box, it's pretty quiet. But if I take this guitar pickup 
and I put it right next to it, the guitar pickup will make, give me my electric music box. Let me go and crank it up a little bit. And I might put it on the top. This is going to make it even louder. Here we go. I take my guitar pickup, put it on top of the music box. Sounds like a horror movie. <laughs> it does sound like a little bit like a horror movie. The electric music box, I'm not saying it's a pleasant musical instrument, but we can use it to pick up not just the vibrations from guitar strings, but from other things as well. And I can also do the electric fork. If I take a fork and I suspend it from the guitar, pit, from the guitar pickup, and I can do that because the fork is made out of steel and there are magnets in here. If I tap it, I got the Beautiful. electric fork, and again, sounds a little bit like a horror movie, but that's okay. We'll have more to do with that later. Now, Brenna has a, this is a piece of technology from about the 1920s. Tell us what you got going on here. Yep, so I have this ye old record player here, and I'm going to create a way to play this record without using the setup here. So all I have is this cone with a needle on the end and it's going to vibrate this little sheet here. So if I... And you should show people like what's on top of that little platter. Maybe people have never seen such oh, a thing before. This is a record. A record? It's called is, Let's Have a Party. Let's Have a Party. What is a record, Brenna? Well, it's just basically a disc and it has lots of little lines on it. When you put a needle on it, it vibrates the needle. The needle vibrates a little sheet of plastic or something and then the noise comes out of a horn. Oh, so a, you have a vibration. Yep. On the, and, and the vibration is basically stored in the groove on the record, which vibrates the needle, and then the little cone couples it to the air. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Everything you need to make music. Everything you need to make music right here. So if I put this on here and I... <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't sound as good as the original mechanism, but it's. I think it's. I think that's good. pretty awesome. Yeah. And actually, the original record player. I think we can. You can go ahead and crank it up, and let's listen right. to the actual record player. And there is no electricity here. Do I just set this on here, Brian? Set it on there and just let it go, and and then let it spin and crank it up. Actually, let it start spinning before you put the needle out. <laughs> awesome! Awesome! And no, that's my that's my MP1 player right there. That before there was that was a portable record player from back in the day. Now one of the things that we saw and the thing that that Brenna was doing was that you have to push air around. The speaker has to push air around, and that's the way you can do it with no electricity. But here's a little electric speaker, and I've got it inside a bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and play music on the bowl, or music on the speaker. When it does that, there's a little thing in front that's going back and forth, and I'm making the sound waves in the air. Okay, so making sound waves in the air. But in order for the sound waves to reach my ear, oh yeah, they have to go through the air. This is a waterproof speaker. Can't hear it anymore. Can't hear it. Very quiet. All that sound is there, but it's basically trapped inside the water. And actually, you can see the top of the water will vibrate. Oh. It's thrown up little droplets of water. But here it is in the air. And if we drown it. It's so much quieter. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Mama Mia, someone just dropped me in the bowl of water and quieted the sound. And the vibrations are stuck in here. I can feel them. And actually, if I put my hand on my ear and put my elbow in the bowl, I can hear the music that way directly, which is kind of awesome. Now. I think the next thing we've got, we have a keyboard, and it's a very special keyboard that Brenna is going to share with us. Yes, I am. And what word should I say, Brian? Something short, something short and sweet. You know, I'm, I'm going to, let's see. Buns. <laughs> Appropriate for Here doing hot cross <laughs> buns. And it looks, it sounds like what's that... 
Oh, tell us what that um, keyboard is doing. So this keyboard is basically taking my voice and it is raising or lowering the pitch of my voice to create a bunch of different oh, notes. I think it just does it by playing um, it faster. Um, does it? Yeah, if you take the sound, because um, take, go ahead and play a low note. It's slow. <laughs> play a high note. Oh, not quite that high. There we go. And you're just going, Bunch! and just say it very, very quickly. And if you go through all the cycles very quickly, the pitch is going to be higher. That makes sense. So can you play us a song? I can. Let's see. Let's see. What, what song should I play? I'm thinking since it says buns, bun, I'm just... Bun, 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 bun. <laughs> there we go. So that was actually playing hot cross buns with buns, with, with bun, which was kind of <laughs> awesome. And we have yet another way to do that. But before we get there, we have a couple... We want to show you a video of another song that was played on this sampling organ. And I think, Brenna, what sound did you use for this one? I, I think I did a cat's meow. Cat's meow. Yeah. So this and is the meow piano. Emma and I played together, had our face masks and our face shields on. Oh, man, look at those two, all protected and everything. Yep. All right, and playing a little, little heart and soul. Oh, I like that close-up, Patrick. <laughs> We kept messing up. <laughs> it's, all right. it's all right. Beautiful. Looked like you were having a good time we to were. be sure. We were. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. And we're going to show people one more musical instrument that you can make at home. Nina is with us. All right. So all you need for this musical instrument is a straw, and you can cut the tip so it's pointed, just like this. So kids could do this themselves. Yeah, it's super easy to make it home. So then it'll just have a little point like this, and then you can blow into it. And oh. it kind of sounds like a kazoo. It does. And another fun thing, you can change the pitch by making the straw shorter. So I'm going to try and cut it as I blow into it. <laughs> Keep going, Nina. You got this. <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for that, Nina. And yeah. Nina has another musical instrument that she's going to play. Oh, yes. and this is an electric musical instrument. So this is pretty cool. We have our little meerkat here. He's wearing some buttons. <laughs> he will actually play music based on how close my hands are to him. Like this. So I can play hot cross buns. <laughs> Oh, you gotta have a little bit of imagination so with this one, I think. <laughs> sounds like a cross meerkat, is what it sounds like. Yes. We have another really cool one here. We have a, we've actually made a speaker with a Pepsi can, and this one sounds kind of. It makes different noises. It sounds like a spaceship. Let's see here. See if we can get it going. There we go. Hearing something. Let's crank it up. Yeah. I, it takes a little bit of time. Let's see. There we go. Oh. Can you hear it? It's a little quiet. I think if you crank up the level on the device. Yeah. Ooh. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. Getting awesome spacey sound out of that. And it changes That's the first where electronic your hands musical are. instrument. And the second one that we've got, Brenna's got the, for a grand finale. We thought there's nothing better we can do than this. We're going to play hot cross buns. And you played it before with buns. Now you're playing hot cross buns with. With actual <laughs> real life buns. Okay? With crosses on the top. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have crosses on the top. Here are my hot cross buns. I have my ground in my hand.
Oh my there gosh. There we that go. Was like hot cross buns played on literal hot cross <laughs> buns. I mean, there is nothing we can do that is going to top that. And so we are going to sign off for this episode. Next week, we'll be back, and our title is called Science It Up. What does that mean? Watch the website. We'll give you more details. Thank you very much for joining us, and thanks for the whole crew. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.